the fourth Aimma, Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal. Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal also was the same opinion. He was so strict that Abu Hanifa, Imam Abu Hanifa, he said, don't write my opinion unless it is confirmed, unless there is an ijma. Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal was more strict because taklid started. He said, don't write any of my opinions. If you find any of my opinion, whether it be for Imam Malik, or my opinion on Imam Malik, or Imam Shafi, Imam Abu Hanifa, go to their source. And if you find any of my opinion, which goes against the opinion of Allah and His Rasul, you reject my opinion. That's the reason I say, I am a hundred percent humbly. If humbly means a person who follows the teachings of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, I am a hundred percent humbly. Other people are 70 percent, 80 percent. So in teachings, if you say following the teachings of Abu Hanifa, Imam Abu Hanifa, may Allah's mercy be on him, makes you Hanafi, I am a Pakka Hanafi, 100% Hanafi. If following the teachings of Imam Malik makes you a Malaki, I am a 100% Malaki. If following the teachings of Imam Shafi makes you a Shafi, I am a 100% Shafi. If following the teachings of Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal makes you a Humbly, I am a 100% Saufi Sad, Humbly. Because all these four great, great Aimma said, if you find any of my fatwa which goes against Allah and His Rasul, you throw my fatwa on the wall. See, all the madhabs of all these four great Aimmas was what? What is the meaning of madhab? Madhab means way, way of going or time of going. Another word for madhab is sunnah. Even sunnah means way. Sunnah of the Prophet means way of the Prophet. So all the madhabs of all these four Aimmas was the madhab of the Rasul. All the Aimmas said, if you find a Sahih Hadith, you reject my opinion. That means all the four Aimmas their madhab was the madhab of the Rasul. Simple. The way of the Rasul. Imam Abu Hanifa, may Allah be pleased with him. May Allah's mercy be on him. He never came to start a new Hanafi madhab. Imam Malik never came to start a new Maliki madhab. Imam Shafi never came to start a Shafi madhab. Imam Abad ibn Hanbal never came to start a new Hanbali madhab. All of them followed the madhab of the Rasul. Like how the Christians misunderstand Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, never came to teach Christianity. He came to teach Islam. Similarly, all these four great Ayamas, they came to give us knowledge of the teachings of Allah and His Rasul. Their madhab was no madhab but the madhab of the Rasul. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 4, verse number 59, Atiullah, Atiur Rasul, Obey Allah and obey the Messenger and those charged with affairs with those charged with affairs or with knowledge you have to follow Allah and his Rasul after that Allah says and those who are charged with the affairs those endowed with knowledge but the verse does not end there the verse continues but if they differ go back to Allah and his Rasul so if those with knowledge Imam Shafi, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, Imam Malik, Imam Hanbal May Allah's mercy be on them all. If they differ, go back to Allah and His Rasul. So all the four Ayyamas, they said the same thing. If you find my fatwa which goes against Allah and His Rasul, reject my opinion. Same thing Allah says, Atullah, Atullah, Rasul, obey Allah and obey the messengers and those charged with their faith, those are not with knowledge. But if they differ, go back to Allah and His Rasul if you believe in Allah and the last day. For this is the best and the correct way of determination. There is no better way of determination according to Allah than going back to Allah and His Rasul. It is so simple. Now, there are some brothers who come and ask me the question. Brother Zakir, fine. Those people who have knowledge of Quran and Hadith, for them it is very easy to know what is right, what is wrong, what is Sahih Hadith, what is Zaif Hadith. How can we as lay Muslims and Muslims understand what is right, what is wrong? It's a very good question. I tell them. Then they say, that's the reason we do taqlid. I tell them, see. What is the meaning of taqlid? Taqlid means, see, following the opinion of any scholar does not make you in the format of taqlid. Doesn't make you mukallid. If, after showing proof that the scholar you are following is wrong, and then you follow him, yet that 
makes you mukhalif. For example, if your mother has a heart problem, fine, has a heart problem, and some doctor, what will you do? Who will you go to? You won't go to Tom, Dick, and Harry. You will go to a heart specialist. You do research. MBBS? No, no, no. MD? Ha, huh? MD. MD in what? In brain? No, no, no. Heart? Yes. So before going to a doctor, you do research. You check up what is his degree. MBBS? No, no, no. MD? Yes. MD in what? Gynecology? No, no, no. Kidney? No, no, no. Brain? No, no, no. Cardiologist? Ha, ah, yes. DM? Super speciality. MD of medicine, then you do super speciality DM. You do your research and then you go to him. You don't blindly follow any Tom, Dick and Harry. If anyone on the street says, your mother has a heart attack, okay, do this. Will you follow him? Will you follow him? No. You will do research. Similarly, the third category, Atullah, Atul Rasul, Obey Allah and Obey the Messenger, the third category, those endowed with knowledge or those charged with their face, you do research. Any scholar says anything, check up whether it's right or wrong. See, everything you cannot check up. Now you have heard 10 different scholars. You understand now, scholar number A, he has given about 30, 40 references. I have checked up 20. 20 are, uh, oh, Quran say hadith. So 20 first you need not check. You check scholar number 2. Scholar number 2, mixture. Part correct. Say hadith, part zaif hadith. Third scholar, majority. Pulling fast ones. Say hadith, it's not there. Bukhari, you open Bukhari, more than 7,000 hadith, you don't find it only. So, you have many scholars, you do little research. Now, once you are, once you make up mind, ha, scholar number one, ha, when he talks, he gives references. When I checked up the references, Quran, say hadith. Then, then what happens? Then when you ask an opinion, and three scholars give you the opinion, you automatically follow the first scholar. Because I've checked up 20 things of his, it has turned out to be right, even the 21st inshallah will be right. So every layman cannot do research on everything everyone says. So first, but we have to limited research, this scholar number A, ah, he speaks on Quran and Hadith, scholar A, B, C, D, or scholar number 1. Scholar number 2, or scholar number B, partly right, partly wrong. Scholar number C, or scholar number 3, majority wrong. So you do little research and classify which type of a scholar is he. And then if you follow without doing research, scholar number one, no problem. But suppose you follow scholar number one, you have done research on. Another scholar comes and says, what scholar number one has said is wrong, I give you proof from Quran and Sai Hadith. You check up the proof. If it is wrong, you reject him and follow scholar number one. But if the proof that fourth scholar gave you, it is from Quran and Hadith going against the opinion of scholar number one, then you reject the fatwa of scholar number one. So if, see for example, I am there, when I hear something, what I speak, in the talk I do my research. But there is more, more knowledge in my, in my head, in my brain, which I haven't checked up. But yet, I classify. For example, if I hear a statement from Sheikh Nasr al Almani, MashaAllah, who expired recently, according to me, one of the greatest muhaddis of the recent times. So what he says, I follow on the face of it. Because I've checked up, he's a scholar, MashaAllah, following Quran and Sahih Hadith. But if someone gets me a fatwa against Nasruddin al-Bani, if it's from Quran and Sunnah, I may reject the fatwa of Nasruddin al-Bani. I mean, but I know, see, every human being can make mistakes. Imam Shafi made a mistake, Imam Abu Hanifa made a mistake, Imam Abu Ibn Hanbal made, Imam Malik made. So why can't Sheikh Nasrud al-Mani make? He can make. But he belongs to the group of scholars which checks up on Quran and Hadith. So if someone gives a fatwa, a local person from here, and Nasrud al-Mani, I'll believe Nasrud al-Mani. If I don't have time. But if I say in the lecture, I check it up. What I say in the lecture, I check up because I'm responsible for that. But for my own knowledge, if I have to make opinion, I can't keep on checking every hadith. Difficult. Difficult for a layman. So, but to classify which group of scholars are you reading of? Which books are you reading? Whose books are you reading? Whose cassettes are you listening to? You classify them. Authentic scholars. This scholar, 
makes 20% mistake. This scholar 50%, this scholar 90% mistakes. You classify and then if you don't have time and belong to the first group of scholar which is authentic, you need not check up everything. If you have the time, it is the best. Do it. Alhamdulillah, mashallah. You don't have the time. Yet you can, that's not called taklid. But if someone shows you proof again, the scholar you respect, and yet you follow him blindly, that is taklid. The taklid we can only do is of Allah and his Rasul. Bas. Atiullah, atiur Rasul. Bas. No one else. Simple. Simple formula. Now some people come and tell me. Brother Zakir, you talk said, don't make sex. But didn't the Prophet said, there will be 73 sects? I said, yes. The Prophet said, there will be. Prophet didn't say you should make. Allah says don't make. But Prophet knew. Even though Allah says don't make sex, the Muslims are bound to make. So he predicted there will be. He didn't say you should make. And if you read the Sahih Hadith of Abu Dawud, Hadith number 4579 and Hadith number 4580, it says that Prophet Muhammad said that the Jews were divided into 71 or 72 sects. The Christians were divided into 71 or 72 sects. And the Muslims will be divided into 73 sects. There's a hadith of Tirmidhi, hadith number 131, as well as hadith of Tirmidhi, hadith number 2643, where the Prophet said that the Bani Israel, the Jews and the Christians, they were divided into 72 sects. But my Ummah, will be divided into 73 sects. All will go to hell except one. So the companions asked, who are they? The prophet said, those that belong to me and my companions. The prophet said, there will be 73 sects. All will go to hell except one. Those that belong to me and my companions. And there is another hadith of Sai Bukhari. Volume number 3, Hadith number 2652, the Prophet said, The best of the people are those of my time, means the companions, the Sahabas. After that, the next generation. After that, the next generation. The Prophet said, the best people are those who are of my generation, the Sahabas. After that, the next generation, the Tabayin. After that, the next generation, Tabe Tabayin. Finish. So, if you have to take anything, you have to take from the generation of the Prophet, the companions, the next generation, Tabayin and Tabe Tabayin. That's it. Three generations. This we call as the Salafi Salihin, the righteous predecessors predecessors or the righteous forefathers. Salaf means predecessor, forefather. So in the Sharia, in the Islamic ruling, the highest in authority, there are four categories. The highest in authority is the Quran, is Allah's word. If you want to find something, if it's not there in the Quran, you go to the next source. That is the hadith, the Sai hadith, the saying of the Prophet. In the saying of the Prophet, the commandment of the Prophet, the call, carries more weight than the actions of the Prophet. So if the commandment and the actions contradict, the commandment carries weight. The third source is the Sahabas, Ijma, the three generations. Sahabas, Tain and Tabitain. The Ijma of these people, of the Sahaba, carries more weight than the individual opinion of the Sahaba. Then, Tain Tabi Tain. And the last source is the Qiyas. If you don't find in any top three sources, in the Quran, in the Hadith, in the lifestyle of the Sahaba, the Tain and Tabi Tain, then you can use Qiyas. Analogy. Deduction. So, Sharia on four things broadly, the Quran, the Hadith. No Sai Hadith will contradict the Quran. Quran number one. Then comes Sai Hadith. In the Sai Hadith, call carries more weight than the Amal. The commandment carries more weight than the action. Then the lifestyle of the three generations, Sabas, 
time to time ijma carries more weight than individual opinion then comes the qiyas so this is how we should follow we should follow quran and the sunnah but now 